You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. As soon as you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Angels with Scaly Wings. I've got my lovely girlfriend Elle listening in on me while I record, so <laughs> it was uh, she asked if she could, and why not? Uh, girlfriend privilege. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Let me set my timer real quick. Alarm Chan, are you ready? There you go. Good girl. All right, let's do it. Let's, uh, there we go. All right. I gotta go now. Uh, take care. Hey, uh, you too. This should be the right place. Oh, damn, that's loud. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh. Can I help you? I can't tell if male or female. Huh. Hello, you're Anna's assistant, right? Assistant? You must be joking. First off, I was never anyone's assistant. Secondly, the witch is dead, so even if I was, I would have moved up the corporate ladder by now. Oh, it's Dame. His name's Damien. Okay. Oh, he looks very feminine. Okay. But you're Damien, aren't you? Yes. Where I come from, people usually introduce themselves before they start asking questions, though. You don't know who I am? Of course I know who you are, but that doesn't mean you don't need to learn some manners. Anyway, what do you want? Can I ask you a few questions? What about... Uh, Anna's murder? And who are you to go around asking questions like that? I'm working with the police on this matter. And I'm supposed to believe that. For all I know, you could be with the murderer and are just here to find out if I know something that could implicate you. Well, according to my information, you didn't particularly like the victim. Not only were you the last person to see her alive, but you were also the one who found her. You are also the one who found her. As you may imagine, this warrants some questions. You know what? I don't have to listen to this. I don't know who you think you are, barging into my workplace and barking questions, but if you really are with the police, let them know that I won't say one word, one more word on the matter without a lawyer. A dragon lawyer. <laughs> I wondered if Damien was a suspicious person in general, or if the rumors surrounding Reza were affecting his perception of me. Before this, everyone I had talked to during my investigations had been rather cooperative. Oh, alright, guess we're moving on. Oh, back at home, okay. Before deciding my next move, I returned to my apartment for a moment of rest. A small piece of paper had been slipped under my door while I was gone. Ah, oh, thought I heard a noise. Okay. Don't go to the portal, was all it said. I considered the possibility of a hidden message, but that was unlikely. The statement was blunt and quickly scrawled. Someone clearly didn't want me to go to the portal, but why would I go there in the first place? As it was out of order right now, such an action would serve no purpose. I looked outside the window, at the portal's faint silhouette in the distance. The paper rustled between my fingers as I fidgeted with it, wondering about the message's sender and significance. My train of thought was violently interrupted by a sharp burst of gunfire echoing from the portal. Good lord! I had to think fast. The gunshots ensured Reza's involvement. He was at the portal. The question was, why? If this was his attempt to flee back to the human world, he would receive a rather unpleasant surprise the moment he would try to use the portal. Or maybe Sebastian's theory was correct, and Reza held the part needed to repair the portal, in which case his escape would be imminent. The gunshots themselves were another, re were another question. Was someone trying to stop him? The police patrol may have seen him, but and he may have taken, it may have been taken by surprise. This could be another murder in progress. But if all of his murders were committed with a sharp weapon before now, not a gun, he didn't want to be heard. Besides, it was only early evening, and the town was still bustling. If Reza wanted to stay hidden, he was doing a rather poor job at it. Of course, there was also the possibility they wanted to be heard, but who would want to attract? Who would he want to attract? The police? Maverick? It could easily be a trap for those hunting him, and that technically included me, though I wasn't sure if he knew of my involvement in the investigation. There was also a very real possibility that he knew my apartment was close enough to the portal to hear a gunshot. Could it be a signal for me? Regardless, the words I held in my hand were unmistakable. Don't go to the portal. What should I do? Go to the portal! <laughs> Stay inside and call the police and be a good little boy. It says don't go to the portal, so I guess I'm not going to go to the portal. Uh, all right, y'all. Um, this seems like a very important decision. Let me save it. Let's stay inside and call the police. Ultimately, I trusted the mysterious message. Remy's list of phone numbers given to me when he brought me to his apartment in the first place proved to be a valuable tool. I dialed the emergency line and was greeted by a calm voice asking me about my emergency. The gravity of the situation was understood, and I was advised to stay, stay inside until I further notice. A team was dispatched to deal with the situation while I waited. For my... From my window, I tried to catch a glimpse of what was going on at the portal, but I couldn't see much. 
The dark of the night was fast approaching. About an hour later, I was informed the team had searched the perimeter, but no trace of Reza was found. I was given the go-ahead to continue with my investigation, but I was free to stay where I was if I, if I felt unsafe. I've got some more time left. What should I do? Uh, let's visit the police archives. Oh. That's cool looking. I was on my way to the police station when a voice called out to me. Hey, you! I'm talking to you, human! Oh, no. Oop. One second, y'all. It sounds like people are home. Give me one moment. Sorry about that, y'all. We're back. Uh, roommates took, uh, took the... Their dog to the uh, ER. Uh, they're hoping he's okay. I am too. We're just gonna manage the stress by just making this video. Um, it keeps me, it helps me keep my mind focused. Anyway, let's uh, <clears throat> let's do it. Okay, can I help you? I certainly hope so. I'm in a little conundrum here. My cart seems to be stuck. I can see that. I'm Katsuharu, by the way, a local ice cream vendor. Keegan, you've probably heard of me by now. Of course, of course. In any case, do you think you can spare some time to help me out? It might take a while, though, so I hope you're not in a rush. Sure, I'll help you. Thank you. Now, I already tried just pulling it out, but I think the axle is going to break if I try to do that again. It wasn't really in the best condition to begin with, honestly, and I heard a crack when I tried to pull it out earlier. So what do you want me to do? The cart is pretty heavy, so I'll be the one lifting it and, put, and holding the wheel steady so the axle doesn't break. Once I give you the sign, you start pulling, and hopefully that'll do the trick. Alright. Here, grab the handles and wait for my signal. By the time I had gotten into position, Katsuharu was already on the other side of the cart, getting dirty as he slowly lifted the affected corner of the cart out of the muddy hole. <laughs> is that your sign? Should I start pulling now? Do it! Do it now! I started pulling, but the cart turned out to be much heavier than I expected and didn't move. What are you waiting for? Do it already! I pulled harder, but the cart still refused to budge. I mustered all my strength before I pulled as hard as I possibly could. Yes! Do it! Slowly the cart started moving, and after a few seconds it was freed from the perilous clutches of the muddy hole. Muddy puddle. With a dull thud, the dragon set the cart down again before he flopped on the ground, exhausted. Huh! Hey, we did it! Yeah, good job! Do you want me to call you some help? No, just need some rest. And maybe some ice cream. Yes, I'll have some ice cream. I'll be better in no time. Must be some pretty good ice cream. <laughs> oh, you have no idea. You must have already heard people talking about my wonderful, unique ice cream experience. Actually, not really. Ah, where are my manners? I haven't even properly thanked you yet. It's no problem. No, I insist. I won't be indebted to you before helping me. What are you planning? You are hereby invited to join me for ice cream. As an ambassador, you owe it to yourself and humanity to try it. Maybe I do. Well, I must get going for now. Here's my number. I'll get you that ice cream some other time. Thanks. You helped Katsuharu. Nice. Al altruist. Oh, I got the altruist achievement. Sweet. Phew, it's getting late. I better head to the police station now. Do I have everything? All right, let's see what Sebastian will say to this. All right. There you are, Keegan. It seems you've been taking. It seems you've taken a liking to Bryce's chair. Maybe I can get used to this. Pause it right here, y'all. All right. Don't tell Bryce though. By the way, a good job calling the police when you heard Reza. It's too bad he got away again. But maybe a witness will come forward. And we'll find out what happened. Now let's take a look at what you've got for me. Hmm. This isn't much information to go on, but who knows when it could come in handy. I do what I can. I know, and your help is greatly appreciated, believe me, especially since we're so short on staff right now. That will be all for today. I'll contact you if we need anything. Of course. See you next time. See ya. See ya. <laughs> oh, back home again. Okay. Finally, a free day. What should I do? Meet with Remy. Y'all better not... Y'all better fucking not kill Remy. He's a good boy. Oh, that's pretty. Hey, Remy. Oh, hello, Keegan. Is there any particular reason why you wanted to meet here? I enjoy Tatsu Park is all. Have you been here before? A few times. I see. Well, what do you think of it? It's pretty romantic. <laughs> oh, that made him blush. Uh, you think so? Yeah, just look at those trees. It would make a nice spot for a date, really. 
I agree with that. You mentioned you wanted to talk to me about something? Yes, well, about that. I just have a lot on my mind and I felt like I needed to tell someone. It wouldn't... I would... It, I wouldn't burden you if I had anyone else to talk to, but the simple fact is that I don't. Hey, you can talk to me, Remy. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's not a problem. What's on your mind? I don't even know where to begin. Do you ever feel like there's an emptiness inside you that every day is the same joyous routine that you wish you could escape, but you can't? Damn, Remy, you're getting philosophical on us here. Jesus. I do. I see. Is this about Emra again? Well, it's not just about her, but working with her doesn't make things any easier. To think that just a few years ago was the happiest I could have been. And now I have nothing but my miserable life. What happened? It's a long story. We have a lot of time. Okay, well... Aww. A few years ago, I worked in the public sector. I mean, I still do, but my position was a different one. I didn't work under a minister back then. Oh, I'm, just, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm not doing Remy's voice. All right. I was part of a committee tasked with providing independent and factually backed opinions on community topics. It was supposed to help not only politicians, but also the general populace. Free from outside interference, we did our own fact-checking based on research and publicly reported findings. Our individual members didn't always agree, but we made sure the end results were based on verifiable facts. In this way, we offered a variety of comprehensive opinions on difficult topics. We found the truth and allowed people and politicians to make up their minds from there. Ark was a key influence in the community, and because the conclusions of each individual members were often very different, it could never be said that we were biased. It was during one such assignment that I met a certain person named Amelia, and my task was to determine the viability of several projects, each competing for a research grant from our council. Amelia was a member of one of the scientific teams vying, vying for a grant. She was an inventor, and her group was looking for ways to streamline hospital processes and tests by utilizing new technology. The first time I saw her was when our committee watched her group's, or watched her group's pitch. One of the things we had to do was determine whether their claims and goals were realistic. In her case, they were. Ultimately, they didn't get the grant, but when she recognized me in a restaurant a while later, we started talking. She was very smart, and I admired her spirit. She just wanted to help her people with her talents, and in this way, she reminded me a lot of myself. We kept seeing one another, and we grew close. Before long, we were dating. It felt so right. I thought our relationship was about to become very serious, but then she informed me that her research group had applied for another grant. Of course, that complicated things, and my committee was once again tasked with judging the viability of the different of the different projects. And while I intended to say to stay impartial on the matter, she probably she probably could be seen as an influence due to our relationship. With these concerns in mind, we decided to not meet again until the grant winner was determined. We had, hadn't expected her group to get it, but in the end, they did. We didn't want to end our relationship over something like that, but if word got out that we were together during the decision-making period, it would have put both our jobs in jeopardy. Let me save it right here. In the end, we decided to wait and to wait and made a, made a commitment. Six months after the grant was given to her team, we would return to one another and make our relationship public. That much time, we would have ensured that it wouldn't be an issue. We even made plans to move in together when that time came. But we never got that far. I only know the rest of what happened from various reports, but apparently Amelia got sick. Nothing serious, mind you. She continued working from home as best she could. The project was already behind schedule, and she didn't want to endanger it. People were critical of and very curious about the project, what, what the project would amount to, and she didn't want to be responsible for its failure if she took some days off to recuperate. So every day she continued working on the project until the dead of night. One late evening she went out to pick up her medication in addition to something to help her stay awake, but she was sick and overworked. A combination of the prescription side effects and the supplements caused her to collapse. No one was around to see her fall. When she was found the next day, she was covered by a blanket of fresh snow. It was too late. She froze to death during the cold winter night. If someone was with her, this would not have happened. But she died out there, all alone. All because we kept our relationship a secret. God damn, Remy. Jesus. Damn, boy. That is... Oh. Ooh, that is dark. Alright. Oh, man. That was a... Jeez, that was a heavy one. <laughs> we had plans to move in together. We even talked about having our own small family. Some things are just not meant to be, it seems. If I had to identify the moment life started going downhill, losing Amelia would be it. My heart was ripped out in that moment. Now only emptiness remains. It's like a wound that never closes. Maybe you saw those pictures in my apartment. Even my home is a reminder of her. We're going to move into that apartment together. And this tie I'm wearing? I got it from her as well. 
When she gave it to me, she said that it was red like her scales. As long as I wore it, she would be with me, in a way. For so long, I've been holding on to her with all my might. I wish I could stop, because I know it's killing me. But I've been doing it for so long that I don't think I can. Yet in some way, holding on to Amelia has helped me. When I look back on all those happy memories you made, Emma's bullying hurts a little less, if only because those memories hurt so much more. And I would love my job if it wasn't for Emma. It's a constant struggle, a battle I have to fight every day. Each of her words slices through me, creating new wounds on top of others that never closed. Some days I just don't want to do it anymore. I don't know how much longer I can. Oh, Remy. Beautiful new art of him. Jeez. Wow, that's gorgeous. I'm not sure if there's anything I, that I, if there's anything that can fill the void. Have you ever spoken to a professional about this? No, I don't think I could. Not with a stranger. Thank you, Keegan. Getting all that off my chest already helped a lot. No problem, Remy. Anything else on your mind? Well, there was the whole thing about Anna. Yeah, you mentioned that last time. Are you still worried about what she was working on? Not as much. I guess whatever she was doing is over now. But who knows what went on in her lab? I imagine we'll all hear about it once the police search, search in her apartment. I guess there's not much use thinking about it, especially now that she's out of the picture. In the end, I can't help but feel a little sorry for her, too. With her condition, I imagine that the Ministry disapproval must have been a tough pill to swallow. What are you talking about? She had cancer. Oh, one second, y'all. Oh, my little thing went off. Jeez, that's bad. Man, what a dark episode. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks for tip if you can. It always helps. Y'all, you got a loved one in your life. Hug them. Love them. They're not always gonna be here, and neither are you. Enjoy every moment you can, y'all. And Jero, enjoy every moment you can. But anyway, y'all, I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!